To say that SpaceX wouldn't exist today without Gwen Shotwell is an understatement. While there are a lot of other people to thank for SpaceX's success, Shotwell has been the steady hand on the wheel steering the company to prosperity, as well as reining in the high stakes gambles of her boss, Elon Musk. And it has been easy. Starting a private space company is not a new idea, but making one grow and be profitable is another story. Shotwell has the unique skill set of being a fierce businesswoman as well as an aerospace engineer. She is the peacekeeper at SpaceX. When Musk rubs outsiders the wrong way with random tweet or statement, Shotwell is there to hop on the phone with clients to smooth things over with them and reassure them that everything is under control, that she is in control. Shotwell was born in Chicago. She's the child of an artist and a brain surgeon and the self-admitted hands-on kid of the family. For her mother, she wanted her to become an engineer. But Shotwell thought those people just drove trains. So in order to help her daughter understand what they do, her mother took her to a Society of Women Engineers event. For the first time, she met women engineers and decided she wanted to become a mechanical engineer. So she later went to Northwestern to study mechanical engineering with a minor in economics, as well as a master's degree in applied mathematics. And plus you're a woman. What? No, I just mean we would absolutely love to have a strong woman working here. I'm not a woman engineer, I'm an engineer. Shotwell originally planned to work in the automotive industry and started working for Chrysler Corporation in engine research, but became frustrated with the multiple levels of approvals and rules which limited productivity and innovation. She then moved to Aerospace Corps for 10 years to learn the business of defense contractors, where she was a thermal engineer and project manager. She wasn't getting the hands-on experience she wanted. She felt like she was just writing papers. In an effort to get more hands-on experience building and designing rockets, she moved to Microcosm, a small space startup whose mission was to design and build low-cost rockets and parts. This is the place where she learned possibly the most important lessons that would benefit her later at SpaceX. On the fly, she learned how to lead a team of people, but possibly most important, she learned how to sell aerospace products to the government and to large companies. This is also known as business development. Using her straight talk, smarts, and confidence, she developed a reputation as a strong saleswoman. Parallel to this, Elon Musk was in the early stages of developing a revolutionary company soon to be known as Space Exploration Technologies. In order to drum up cash for his new startup, he seriously needed a business development talent who knew what they were doing as an engineer. Early SpaceX employee Hans Groningsman knew his former colleague Gwen Shotwell wanted to work for a company that would actually do something to revolutionize the space launch industry. He saw it as a match made in heaven. So he set up a meeting between the two innovators. She soon became employee number seven at SpaceX as the head of business development and was immediately tasked with going to sell some rockets. Even though those rockets did not exist, had not flown before, and now she had a new boss who constantly made promises and predictions that would be impossible to achieve. So Gwen only had the potential of SpaceX to sell, which proved to be tricky. In any event, she began to pull some old strings and began meeting with the US government agencies and satellite companies to begin to persuade them to book launches on their still unflown Falcon 1 rocket. After getting several no's, she was able to convince the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, also known as DARPA, and a Malaysian satellite startup to invest in the early Falcon 1 development flights. They were eager to see if this tiny rocket company could deliver on their price promise. On top of those deals, she was able to get NASA to award SpaceX a $278 million contract to start developing a larger vehicle that would ferry supplies to the ISS. She also booked around a dozen Falcon 1 flights to other clients. All of this happened prior to it ever reaching orbit. The first three launches of the Falcon 1 weren't great, but every launch saw progress and Shot will continue to provide encouraging communication with her new clients that SpaceX was so close. Shot was quickly becoming Musk's closest confidant as she was generating extensive revenue and was taking on more of a leadership role in the company. She was keeping the company alive. So, Musk promoted her to president and chief operating officer at the company. In 2008, the fourth launch of the Falcon 1 was a success and a huge boost in confidence for SpaceX. So much, in fact, that NASA awarded them one of the commercial crew contracts that paid SpaceX $1.6 billion to develop a crew rated vehicle to dock with the space station, along with a dozen resupply missions. This was the shot in the arm SpaceX needed to allow them to invest in their own technology that eventually standardized the idea of reusability in the space industry. 
Shawal has been at the helm of SpaceX for over 10 years, being the bridge between Musk and his staff while we're earning the reputation as the person who can translate Musk's ambitious goals into reality. She makes the tough day-to-day -day decisions that dictate the future of the company. As a field general for SpaceX, she gets the troops where they need to be, when they need to be there, efficiently. The now vice president of Mission Assurance, Hans Gronigsmin, once stated, Elon says, let's go to Mars. And she says, okay, what do we need to do to actually get to Mars? SpaceX has seen their greatest achievements under her steady hand. And this is only the beginning. Thanks a lot for watching. I hope you guys learned something about the badass secret weapon at SpaceX, Gwen Shotwell. Um, I'm wearing a pretty special shirt today. It's by this guy named Michael. He is the designer of these shirts. He does a lot of really cool designs. He reached out to me and asked if I wanted to have my own shop on his store and could help raise some money for my channel. I said, absolutely, but I don't want to make any money from this. I wanted all the proceeds of my shirt sales to go to a nonprofit that's close to my heart. And that's the Iraq and Afghanistan Veterans of America. Basically fight for legislation that helps benefit the lives of veterans all over the country. So uh, go there, buy some shirts. I don't make a penny from this. So if you like Sweet Space T-shirts and you want to support veterans, this is a win-win. So go buy a shirt and uh, go hug a veteran for me or shake their hand. Do something. I don't know. Anyways. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe to my channel. And uh, I have a couple fun videos already shot. I just need to get them edited and out. So here's to a big 2019. Okay, bye everybody.